All right, we are here to talk about abbreviated day. We're going to talk about it at MADSEC next week, too. So um, it's kind of a big agenda, makes it seem long, but it won't be long. We're going to do quick introductions. We're going to talk about Muser's definition of abbreviated day, um, written notice documentation for um, abbreviated day for educational reasons and medical reasons. And then we'll talk about IEP documentation and resources and questions. Just interrupt with questions as we go. Um, like it to be a conversation. So I am Jennifer Gleason. Um, I was a special education teacher before I joined the department about two and a half years ago. And almost the whole team is here. So, um, Paulette, you want to come say hi? Hey, everyone. If you haven't uh, been to any of our trainings before, my name is Colette Sullivan. I'm the federal programs coordinator. I've been with the department just about five years. And before that, I too was a special ed teacher for 30 years. So, it's nice to see you all. Thanks for joining us. And we have Carly with us. Hi, I'm Carly Thibodeau, and I joined the team just over a year ago. And before that, I was a teacher for 21 years. Awesome. And Ashley Satry is new to our team this summer. She is not here with us today, but she has been a wonderful addition to the team. And our wrangler, Julie. Hi, I'm Julie Pelletier. I'm the admin support for this monitoring team. Um, I have been with the DOE for six years. And prior to that, I was admin support in a K-5 to elementary school for 16 years. Awesome. Thank you, Julie. Here's our contact information. If you don't have it already, um, we are here for anything you need. Um, answer questions need to vent, we're here. Um, link to the procedural manual, which is a wonderful document to have right next to you when you're writing IEPs. And of course, Muser, we're going to dig in quite a bit to Muser today. So let's start with that. We're going to start with how Muser defines an abbreviated day. So an abbreviated day is any day, any day that a child attends school for less time than their peers. So if your school day is six and a half hours and a student attends for six hours, that's an abbreviated day. Um, Muser says abbreviated day does not apply to change in placement under discipline with children, discipline of children with disabilities. Um, it's difficult to interpret what they mean by that. There's this weird relationship between abbreviated day, um, disciplinary change of placements, and um, tutorial instruction that is unclear in user. So there we go with that. Um, it is the full expectation that children with IEPs will attend school for a full day. If an abbreviated day goes for more than 10 days, it is considered a change in placement, and that decision can only be made by the IEP team. And then later in that same section, they say, abbreviated school day is initiated only by the IEP team. So they say it twice, so I think it's a big deal. Um, the IEP team needs to make every effort to maintain the child in a full day program, right? So um, services, supplementary aid, supports, anything they need to try and keep them full day before you determine that an abbreviated day is appropriate and necessary. So just make sure you document all of those efforts. Abbreviated day can be initiated for one of two reasons, the child's individual educational needs or the child's individual medical needs. 
So this is just um, the U.S. Federal Department of Justice got involved because there was a um, civil rights complaint against a district in Maine. Um, so they went in and investigated. So they are keeping an eye on this. Um, Disability Rights Maine is keeping an eye on this. It's kind of a big deal all across the country right now. So make sure you're documenting what you need to document. So any questions on any of that? See anything in the chat box? Nothing in chat. All right, we got quizzes. Is Jen here? I know Jen likes the quizzes. Um, all right, who can place a student on an abbreviated day? Principal, parent, IEP team, or special ed director? Just put the letter in the chat. You guys are good. Everybody's got it. It's only the IEP team. Nice. All right. How should I document efforts to keep a child on a full day of school prior to placing them on an abbreviated day? This might be a trick question because I didn't give you the answer to this yet. What do we think? Yep, it's A and C, so E. Written notice and IEP amendments. You wanna make sure both of those things um, are updated and showing that movement and the supports that you're providing. All right. So documentation, this is what everybody's interested in. So first we're gonna talk about an abbreviated day based on the child's individual educational needs. So most of what these slides, you could see the citation there, but I, I pulled the language right out of Muser. So this is what it says. Document in the written notice the educational basis for the determination and how the determination is based on the individual needs of the child. So that's what you need to document in your written notice when you're first putting a child on an abbreviated day. Also, when placing a student on an abbreviated day, the IEP team must address how the student will receive full access to the general curriculum and IEP services, how they will participate in assessments. The team must develop a re-entry plan no longer than 45 calendar days and identify the actions the SAU will take to assist the child to come back to a full day. So that is all at that first meeting where the team is deciding to place the child on an abbreviated day. If they're still on an abbreviated day after those 45 calendar days, the IEP team must meet every 20 school days, review progress toward returning to a full day, review progress in the educational setting, and if they're not progressing, determine what setting will allow them to progress. So you're gonna start at that point talking about maybe a different placement or maybe not. Um, and if it's not in the written notice, it didn't happen. So all these things that you're talking about in the meetings need to be documented in the written notice. Oh, we have a question. Question on students who are court ordered not to be on school property. So if they're getting tutoring, I'm assuming, are they getting tutoring? Yes. They're on two hour, a two hour tutoring sessions. So that would be an abbreviated day. I just wanted to make sure that if they're doing, if they were in compliance with Muser. So you would have to you would have to document all of that. You would have to document the court order in the written notice and all of that. 
I mean, just to make sure you, you, it's really about documenting everything. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't this we didn't go the wrong way on that. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough situation. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, could I talk more about full access? Full access is full access. I, um, let me go back to that side. This is right out of Muser. Full access to general curriculum. So whatever they would have access to if they were on a full day, they would need to have access to that curriculum. So let's say um, this is I, I I was the one that asked that question. So let's so if you have a student who's on, let's say uh, they're up to a half a day. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, if they're half day, they're not going to be getting full access to the general ed curriculum. So I guess I just was like, how do we how, I guess I was just kind of had some questions around that. Yeah, that and that's a big question because pretty much any student that's on a shortened day, how would they possibly get full access? Right. I mean, we, you know, you can like, let's say they're missing art or, you know, other general ed curriculum. I mean, might be possible to access it, but full access obviously wouldn't be. Right. And maybe they can um, access something from home. Um, maybe the team can talk about um, I, I would say have a plan. You're addressing how this is going to happen. Maybe maybe some kind of combat or something comes at the end of the abbreviated day when they're back to a full day or something. Something that the team would have to really talk about that and and just document what the team comes up with. Re-entry plan. We're in the IEP. We're going to talk about the IEP. So hold on to that question. Re-entry plan should be written so student can increase their day before the next meeting. So the re-entry plan is no longer than 45 calendar days. So yes, um, according to Muser, the re-entry plan should be they are completely back to a full day and 45 calendar days. So that should be the plan. If the plan doesn't work out and they're not, then you meet every 20 school days. If it's your court ordered person and the court order is longer than 45 days, I would just document that in the re-entry plan and just really, I know I'm gonna say this a lot, but just really document every single thing in the written notice. This one is actually for a different student, but like, I just want to make sure like we're I'm wording this right that if they go beyond the 45 days and we're reviewing every 20 school days that they can still be increasing and be back to a full time like we wouldn't have to necessarily meet again on the 20th school day right if they were back to full time on the 18th school day like they shouldn't have to be able to, they shouldn't have to wait until the next 20 day meeting before they're allowed to increase their time right 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 Right. And but we're going to talk about in when we talk about the IEP, when they increase their day, you're going to have to amend the IEP. So you might you may or may not need a meeting there anyway. We'll talk about that, though. These are good questions. Are these timelines applicable for preschool students? I don't know if there's such a thing as abbreviated day for preschool because FAPE for preschool is like nine hours or something. Is that right, Colette? Nine hours a week. Can you say that again? I couldn't hear that. Yes, the, the, the full day is different. Right, so I, I don't think there is such a thing as abbreviated day for preschool. I know that when we were on site last cohort reviewing CDS sites, we were told that there was no abbreviated day for any of those sites. Right, right. The faith is low. Faith, it's a it's a low number of hours per week. So, not to worry about that. This is a handy dandy little visual because we love a visual. Um, 
So it just tells you everything you need to document for that first meeting. And then if you go to the every 20 school day meetings, what needs to be documented in the written notice. All right, we have got, they go to public pre-K that is 30 hours a week for their typical peers, but FAPE is still nine hours a week, according to the law. So they're going with typical, it, it's not a, it's, it's, it's not, it's just not an abbreviated day. It's just their day. That's what their day is. All right, I got another quiz. Re-entry plan can be up to how many calendar days? Yeah, I knew you guys would know all that. 45. All right. Medical needs, much easier. Um, you still need to document in the written notice the medical basis for the abbreviated day. At that first meeting, um, consider the individual medical needs as identified by the qualified medical professionals. So make sure that's there. Um, and again, the same two things. How will the student receive full access to the general curriculum and IEP services? And how will they participate in assessments? So you don't need a reentry plan for medical because it's just gonna be when they're better. Um, the team needs to meet no less than every 90 calendar days. The team meets any time the child is medically able to increase their day. And the IEP needs to be looked at and revised as needed. Oh, and which is what this says. Um, review the child's progress and modify the IEP as appropriate. And again, if it's not in the written notice, it didn't happen. So make sure all of these things are documented. So the first meeting, um, all those things we just talked about, your meeting anytime the student is able to increase their school day, but at least every 90 calendar days, review progress, any IEP amendments. So that is a much easier process medical. Any questions about medical? Nothing in chat. All right, we'll keep going. Flying through this. All right, the IEP. Let's look at documentation in the IEP. So you want to make sure that the IEP addresses the reason that the child was placed on abbreviated day and any supports, services, accommodations that will assist that child to participate in the full day, right? So you might need to include an IHP, a behavior plan, goals, services, supports, accommodations, um, and you might need to revisit this quite a bit, right? You, you want to make sure that that IEP addresses the reason they're on an abbreviated day. Services, service times need to reflect the actual services the student is receiving. So if they're coming to school for two hours and they're getting special education for one hour, it shows one hour. So that means that as they increase their time, you're amending those service times on the IEP. Least restrictive environment percentage is based on the full school day, not the student's abbreviated day. So here's our example. Full school day is six hours. Sam attends school two hours per day, five days per week. One of those hours is spent with his peers. So let's look at how we're going to figure that. So he spends one hour with peers, six hour school day, not Sam's two hour day. So it's 17% would be his LRE, not 50%. And that would change as he increases his day. 
well, it may or may not change as he increases his day, depending on if he's going to be with Peterson or not, I guess. So you should expect to amend the IEP quite a bit, both before the student gets placed on an abbreviated day, because you need to show that you're trying different things, right? And then as they're moving through their reentry plan, you're going to need to adjust service times, LRE, modify goals, support services to make sure you're continuing to address that reason for abbreviated day and assist the child to return to a full day. So there's lots going on, a lot of meetings, a lot of amendments, a lot of documentation. So IEP questions or any questions. in chat still. All right, we got another quiz then. Oh, wait a minute. Do we have to have the meeting to amend or can it be a non-meeting amendment if all parties agree and the student is meeting the re-entry plan? I would say that's an IEP team decision. It's just like any other amendment really. That's a non-answer answer there. All right, here's another quiz. Must I put everything in the written notice? Trick question, of course you do. <laughs> because if it's not in the written notice, it didn't happen, as we all know. All right, that's all I got. That was very fast. Did I answer everybody's questions? Because they were coming in at the beginning and I might have jumped over some. No, all good. Okay, um, here's our resources. That second one is our professional learning page. Um, it's much easier to navigate now than it used to be. So jump on, all kinds of fun stuff on there. This is our PD schedule with handy dandy um, links to register for all of these cool PD opportunities. Yes, Laura, you will get the PowerPoint with your contact hour. Um, we have a couple of PD opportunities that we would love for you to share with the gen ed teachers that teach your kids. Um, the next one, two weeks from today, is Discipline and Manifestation Determination, and April is Special Ed Law for Gen Ed Teachers. Um, so that would be really cool if you could share those and then um, share all of them with related service providers because we love to have them, but especially um, February, Writing Measurable Functional Goals, and May is Consultation and Related Service Goals. So share those far and wide because you know we love to have company professional learning feedback we use this feedback we've updated our pd based on feedback carly just put the link in the chat box there's qr code um put your email address in to get your contact hour and a whole bunch of goodies um with one of which is this PowerPoint presentation. Um, select, I don't know what we select, Carly. What do we select? Uh, it'll be today's date. So 10, 11, 20. Uh oh, did I lock up? No, Carly nope. locked up. Thank okay. You, Carly. Yeah. Okay. So select today's date when it asks you which training you were in, and you'll get your contact hour. Apparently, I'm back. Sorry about that. I Good. guess I just That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you're back. Um, this is our contact information. Again, any questions that come up, um, let us know, and we will answer them as best we can. Sometimes, I'm sorry, but the answer is it's an IEP team decision or or it's a district decision because Maine is a local control state, but 
Um, sometimes that's the answer. So that's it. That's all we got. Enjoy the rest of your day. Is there any chance you'd stay? I just want to pick your brain about the preschooler stuff, if that's possible to stay on with you. Yeah, we could do that. Some okay. other people might be interested. I'm going to stop sharing so I could see people. I just, I, so we're having like manifestation determination meetings because preschools are determining the need that children should be attending what we would consider an abbreviated day. So I'm just wondering, is Part B 619 taking additional steps that aren't needed if abbreviated day isn't a thing for preschoolers in the state of Maine? I'm going to look in Muser because I really... I can respond, Ashley, by... by um, we are scheduling a meeting with the 619 coordinator to get some clarification on a variety of topics. So if this is one that is unclear, we will definitely work to, to uh, clarify that for the field. And if okay. you want to drop your email, either, either email one of us or just drop your email right in chat if you're comfortable doing that, and we can respond to you very specifically. Great. That would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. sure. It, yeah, I will look up the... Um, that citation for what for the amount of time of yeah. tape for preschoolers and email that to you. Yeah, yeah and I we, think for three year olds it's nine hours and for four year olds it's twelve hours. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but I think the the muddy water comes to when the public school has a public school pre K that's offered to all students in the area. I think that that's. The, the muddy water. Mm, I could see that being muddy. It's a good question. And what we can do for for any, because obviously people stayed on because they, they must be interested. Um, so what we can do is we when we send out the contact hours, when we follow up, we can answer this question for everybody. We'll just, we'll just answer it broadly. But it's, it is definitely something worth clarifying and we are working with the 619 coordinator. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, great question. Thank you so much for bringing that it up. Good. Yeah. Thank you. It's helpful. All right. Any other questions? All good. All right. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Take care.